with more. Thanks so much, Jen. You know, every business, every person in the world, in the Bay Area, of course, has been impacted by COVID-19. And people keep talking about essential businesses. Well, of course, we in San Francisco and Northern California know that the arts are part of what is essentially San Francisco about us. So to talk about how COVID-19 has impacted and will continue to impact the arts community, we continue our discussion today with Brad Erickson, Executive Director of Theater Bay Area. Brad, welcome to The Great Pause. Thank you, thank you, David. So before you begin, why don't you tell us how have you been dealing with, as we call it, The Great Pause? How have you been getting by personally? And then we'll get into professional. Mm -hmm. Well, I think probably the, the biggest difference for me has been working from home rather than going into the office. I get down there once a week, pick up some checks, pick up some bills, um, and then come back to my house. And it's, uh, it's a very strange thing to, I, I live in the Excelsior, so to ride through the city on my bicycle, empty streets, get down to the Civic Center area, almost no one's there, go into an empty office. It does appear the janitor is arriving <clears throat> once a week to empty empty the recycling and what little I leave behind. And then it's just so empty and so strange to see the city in this way and to, you know, learn how to work from home. We're, we're learn how to keep a, a staff connected. We're doing that through daily calls with each other. We're working a lot on Zoom, staying connected with folks, but it's a very world it seems at the moment. Well, of course, one of the other places that is empty here in San Francisco are our area stages. Talk to me, what is it like right now in this moment for the theater community in San Francisco and the Bay Area? And when are we going to get back on stage with our actors and performers and directors? Well, it's really difficult. It's difficult for everyone. It's difficult for the largest companies, for ACT and Berkeley Rep and for the Curran for SF Broadway, it's difficult for the tiniest companies, and it's difficult, of course, for artists and folks who are working in the theater, and, and the same is true for the music world and dance as well. So no one is selling any tickets, clearly, right? We were hoping maybe at the beginning of this that we would be able to, in September or maybe October, most of a regular show are thinking that probably the best bet is more like January and maybe not even until April. And that is posing some really, really difficult challenges for our companies to you know, deal with not having any ticket sales for what could be an entire year. And what does that mean for workers who are out of work, who are thrown out of work quite unexpectedly, trying to find ways to keep you know, food on the table and a roof over their head, and that's sort of where we are at Theater Bay Area. We saw this very early on. Folks in the community, Eric Ting at Cal Shakes and others, were reaching out and saying, is there something we can do for these workers who suddenly don't have jobs and suddenly aren't going to have an income that they were expecting? And I have to say, it's been amazing. We set up something called the Performing Arts Workers Relief Fund in conjunction with our sister organizations, Dancers Group and Intermusic SF. And in the last two months, we've been able to raise a quarter of a million dollars. We've already granted out over $200,000 to 250 plus workers who are in desperate need. And I'll say this, that we still have 400 applications that we haven't been able to get to yet, and more applications are coming in every day. So on the one hand, it's been gratifying to be able to help people, and the stories are really heartrending. It's also, you know, the fund is still open and we are still gladly accepting contributions because we receive contributions every day, but we receive even more applications every day from these workers who are needing some help right now. You know, hearing you talk about the direct assistance for actors reminds me of during the worst of the AIDS HIV years, a board that I was on, Visual Aid, a nonprofit, existed specifically to get direct assistance to working artists because one of our founders made the observation one day that one of our artists had to choose that day between getting pain supplies or paying for his AZT. So what you're doing is like that. You're, you're giving direct assistance to actors. Not This isn't going to companies in the Bay Area. That's right. To theater um, companies. This is going to individual, and we've, we've called it workers because, yes, actors, but it's also stage managers. It's people who work backstage. 
We've had folks who are ushers at the Curran and SF Broadway. Those are real jobs who, of course, they don't have work either if the house isn't open. So we wanted to make it open to workers of all kinds and from all this of music and dance as well. So music, dance, theater, the um, awards have gone out about evenly to those three different disciplines and again, performers, but also folks backstage, folks in the box office, folks who are working the front of house, anybody who has been thrown out of work because of the cancellation of these productions is welcome to apply and we're receiving more applications every day. You know, this is just devastating to hear that you may not have plays, performances on stage until April. I mean, because, you know, having gone to school in theater, I know that when I was an actor, I didn't get paid to be an actor. I had to wait tables. Well, if you're an actor, singer, whatever, and a waiter, all of your income is gone. I mean, are we looking at an industry that is being devastated even more than what we're hearing about in retail and other small business here in San Francisco? I mean, April just sounds untenable. It's pretty horrendous. I mean, I think at the moment, our our folks are, you know, are very badly hit. We know that others are as well. You know, waiters are out of work and cooks are out of work and lots of folks are out of work. We we are not saying that we're we're suffering more than others, but we may suffer longer than others. The governor has put out the different stages that he wants to reopen the state and quite honestly, gathering in large groups live and in person is in that last, the final stage, stage four. Restaurants will open significantly earlier. So you're absolutely right. It's, it's very difficult for our companies and it's really difficult for the workers. And I know that company leaders, we, we meet regularly once a week to talk about what's happening. We compare notes, we compare sort of projections on what we're thinking. And it's very difficult. I mean, some folks are having to say, I just, I don't know, I can't pay rent. I'm just going to not pay. I can't pay the rent and have any staff. And so they're hoping for the best with their landlords. It's a very difficult situation um, for everyone. And the longer this goes on and the longer we're not able to reassemble, the deeper those cuts will be. And you're absolutely right to say that many times in the arts, you know, arts workers do augment their income as a waiter or in the service industry. I know I did. I used to work at Zuni Cafe and, you know, Zuni is closed along with all the rest of the restaurants. So yeah. it's very difficult for both workers and companies. And one of the things that Theater Bay Area is doing to help is we're engaging in a study that's being led by the researchers at Wolf Brown. This is a actually an international study. We're partnering with other service organizations across the country to look at the changing attitudes of audiences over time around, around coming back, right? When will they feel comfortable coming back into a theater, coming back into a concert hall? What will the conditions need to be for them to feel safe enough to buy a ticket? And those attitudes are changing over time. So we're assembling a cohort here in the Bay Area of 20 organizations. We've got groups from the ballet to Berkeley Rep to YBCA to small groups all working together to, to look at how their audiences are feeling about coming back. And that will help, I think, immensely for these companies to understand, okay, so now we're allowed to open the door. What do we need to do to make our audiences feel safe so that they will be willing to buy a ticket and come through the door? Right. Right. You know, we've only got a couple minutes left, but I just want to touch on the, the obvious, you know, what can we do to help? I was watching the documentary the other day about Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Part of the New Deal was, were programs that actually put artists and actors to work. I, I think about the company that uh, Federico Garcia Lorca put together during the Spanish Republic because the arts and the theater were considered part of the spiritual heart of the nation. How is our government helping theater artists and other artists in the Bay Area? And is it enough? And what do you need to help us get, get through this great pause? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I'm, I'm heartened that, you know, arts organizations and other nonprofits were included in the PPP. Many of us had a difficult time getting it, but the ones that most of the folks that I know who applied have now received their money, including Theater Bay Area, which has been a big help. And that was the first time that nonprofits of any kind 
were allowed to go for a loan through the Small Business Administration. And that, I think, was some really strong efforts on behalf of, of our um, of our leader, Nancy Pelosi. So that was great. Um, and there is um, plans at the state level to create a kind of WPA work program. And at the state level, Californians for the Arts, I'm on that board, we are working with the state policymakers to have artists included in that WPA kind of program that the state is looking at creating. We're really understanding arts and artists as second responders in a crisis. This was a concept that came up from the folks at the Sonoma Arts Council following the fires in Santa Rosa and the way that they saw the first responders, of course, saved people's lives. But the arts were going in after that community was devastated to help people rebuild their lives. And that idea mm -hmm. of the art and artists as being second responders is something that we're taking to the state, we're taking to our cities, we're even taking to Capitol Hill to talk about this is the kind of work that needs to be supported by the federal government, by the state government, by our local governments to really help individuals and our communities rebuild and find a way to restore their lives following this pandemic. Brad, in closing, what would you like to say to your membership, to the theater companies and the actors and the stagehands, everyone that puts their, their passion on a stage? What message do you have for them? I think the message has to be about hope. I mean, we know that theater and the performing arts, all of the arts have been with us from the very beginning of humanity. It's something that all humans do across all times and across all cultures. No matter what happens with the economy and no matter how long it takes us to reopen our theaters, we will reopen. We will be making theater again and music and dance. And there will be work again in this, in this arena. So, Hold fast, ask for help if you need it, and we, we really look forward to coming back into those theaters and seeing our artists on stage. Great, thank you, Brad, for what you do on behalf of the clientele of Theater Bay Area and for all theater artists everywhere. Thanks very much. You know, Jen, I was taught that the definition of theater was the revelation of private truth in a public place with passion. And certainly Brad has passion about helping our arts community. Jen, back to you.